This is the Audio Technica M3 wireless in-ear monitor system. Now this is a superb system. It's got stereo inputs, plenty of signal strength, plus over 1300 selectable UHF frequencies. So no matter where you are in the world, no matter what's going on around you, it will work. However, at over a thousand dollars, it is certainly not a cheap solution. In this video, I'm gonna show you how for less than $100 per person, you can get yourself set up with an in-ear monitor solution. So stay tuned. Okay, so before we get into the what and the how, let's take a quick minute to talk about why. There are really three main reasons why you might want to implement an in-ear monitor solution in your band. Reason number one, stage volume. The worship band that I am involved with consists of an acoustic guitar, an electric guitar, a drum kit, a piano player, a bass guitar, and various uh, vocalists. And up until recently, each one of those musicians had their own personal fallback monitor on the stage, you know, a powered monitor wedge on the floor. On top of that, the guitar player had a guitar amp on stage, the bass player had a bass amp on stage. Basically, the whole stage was very noisy. And we end up with the same problems, just like most other people in that situation do. Stage volume becomes a problem when people can't hear themselves properly and they turn themselves up in the monitors and the monitors just get it louder and louder and louder. And eventually, the whole thing is too noisy. Now, sitting behind the mixing console, the sound desk, you know, I literally take one of the faders and do this with it and it would make zero difference because the sheer volume from the monitors on the stage was just so much louder than anything com coming out of front of house. In fact, I'm embarrassed to say I have accidentally run the entire service before with front of house off and not noticed. That's how loud our stage was. The second reason you might want to implement in-ears is for better control over personal mix. When you've got a monitor wedge on the floor, obviously whatever comes out of it other people around you are gonna be able to hear it as well. So by you asking for more in your monitor might mean the guy standing next to you all of a sudden gets a whole bunch of stuff that he doesn't wanna hear. With in-ears, you can have your own personal mix, whatever you want in your ear does not impact anybody else around you. And the last reason is for implementing things like click tracks. If you're not familiar with what a click track is, we're talking about getting a metronome running. This is very common in modern worship for the band to play to a click. Now that's great, but you can't have that bleeding out of fallback monitors on the floor. You can't have the congregation hearing this ticking going on throughout the service. So you really have to use in-ears if you want to use the clicks. So that leads us now very nicely into the how and the what. Now the Audio Technica M3 solution that I showed you earlier on is a great solution and I've got no complaints of this system. But as I said, it costs almost a thousand dollars. And when you've got a band consisting of at least five musicians plus singers, you know, the costs very easily start to add up and my budget certainly couldn't handle it. So this led me to looking for other solutions. And to be honest with you, when it comes to wireless and quality, I could not find anything cheaper. In fact, Sennheiser make a comparable system that runs you almost $2,000. So you ask yourself, is wireless what you really need. In a modern worship setting, most of us are gonna be stationary. So this led me to look into wired solutions. Now our drummer is stationary, of course, he sits in front of a drum kit. Our pianist is stationary. For the most part, our bass player and acoustic player is stationary. And the electric guitar player as well. He's standing up, but he's not moving around. So in terms of wired solutions then, there are many options. Uh, the Aviom solutions come to mind. Those personal mixers which stand next to you. The Aviom solutions are also great because you have personal mix control. You can set whatever levels of whatever they put into them so you can control your own mix into your ears, which is perfect. You don't need a monitor engineer to set anything up for you. However, not only are those Aviom systems expensive, our digital mixing console has a feature on it that lets us control the monitor sense via an app on your iOS device, an iPhone, and iPad. So getting a personal mixer wasn't really something we needed. Alternatively, you could use something like this. This is a personal mixer. It takes a monitor feed out of your console and provides headphone jacks so you can just plug straight into this. So that's a decent option as well. 
So after doing a bunch of research online, investigating other options, headphone amps, those little personal mixing consoles, what I came up with in the end was this. Now this is the Rolls PM50S, the little headphone amp. This is a stereo headphone amplifier that takes a quarter inch TRS input out of the back of your mixing console and will give you stereo out to your ears. Now the best part about this is this comes in at under $50 on Amazon. So when weighing up $1,000 versus $50, it's a no brainer. It's powered by a simple nine volt power adapter that comes with it. The best thing about that power adapter too is it's 110 volts to 240 volts. So it works internationally, which is great for me. Also, if you're a guitar player and you've got a pedal board on the floor, that means you've probably got a multi power supply for your pedals. If you've got a spare cable, it'll power this just fine. So you can leave this on the floor and power it off your pedal power. It takes either a quarter inch or an eighth inch uh, headphone as well. So no matter what sort of headphones you got, you're sorted. One note for reference though, if you're using or if you're trying to use smartphone headphones or any sort of headphones that have a microphone in them, you'll note they have three rings around them. The third ring being for the microphone. Now I've tried those in here and they don't work. So that might be a blessing in disguise because you probably don't want your musicians up on stage with their white iPhone uh, earbuds in. It doesn't, look, it doesn't look right. And that leads us nicely into the other area here, which is headphones. There are a ton of options out there for use with things like this when it comes to in-ear earphones. You can think about brands like Shure, Sennheiser, just to name a couple, but the prices for these are wildly varied. You may also want to consider here just what sort of policy you implement. Are you going to force your band members to go out and get their own earphones or are you going to provide earphones for them? Now, if you're on a budget and you are wanting to implement a solution where you provide earphones for your team, then let me give you some options. These set of headphones here are by a company called ME Electronics and you can pick them up on Amazon right now for $13. That's right, 13. That's not a significant investment, so you can get a whole bunch of them. They come with uh, clear straps so that they're well hidden on stage. They wrap around the ears nicely. And for $13, they're not great, okay? But they do the job just fine. They also come with a bunch of different earbud sizes so they'll fit anybody. And they come in this nice little protective sleeve. The key to making them really work though is you've really got to get a tight seal in your ear. Now, if your budget extends a little bit further than that, then check out ME Electronics also make a set called the M6 Pro set. Now, what sets them apart is other than the fact that they sound far superior, is that they still have the same clear cable, they still uh, wrap around the ear, but the earbuds are removable. That means should you ever damage them, you can just get a new cable. You don't have to replace the whole system. Now they are a bit more expensive. In fact, they're gonna run you about $50. But from my sound testing, from my experience with them, it's definitely an investment worth considering. And the last set I wanna to recommend to you today is these, or well, these rather. Now this is the Shure SE215 set. Now these are by far the best of the three uh, earphone options that I've presented to you today. They're also the most significantly expensive set. Uh, a set of these is gonna run you about $99. But if your budget can stretch to it, it's definitely worth it. They sit tighter in the air. The bass response is much better than on the other two. And overall build quality is far superior. They also come with this nice pouch, plenty of earbud options. And again, they have detachable ears. So the ears themselves come off. Now all three of these options are what's called single drivers. Now that means inside the earphone itself, there is a single speaker. That speaker is sort of designed geared towards mid-range stuff. That means they're not crystal clear on the top end and they don't have super great low end bass clarity. Now if that's something you are looking for, then you might need to consider something like dual drivers, triple drivers, or even quad drivers. Unfortunately, that means you're gonna have to pay significantly more. Quad drivers from Shure run you almost a thousand dollars. Yeah, a thousand dollars for a set of headphones. Now the last thing I want to cover off today is just how we plug all this together. Now running headphones out of your ears, down your back and into this uh, headphone amp on the floor, after a while with that plus like the lead from the guitar, the bass guitar, you know those two leads start to really get in the way. So what we did was a pretty uh, number eight wired type New Zealand DIY solution. 
and I just created what we call like a, uh, I don't know what you call it, a, a combi cable. I combined, basically I combined two cables together. So on one end, we've got the guitar lead, just like this. This goes into your guitar. And on the other end, there is a 3.5 mil stereo extension lead. Now they are the same length, so I tried to match them to the cable. So if I got a 10 foot uh, guitar lead, I have a 10 foot extension lead. Now I've put a link to this cable in the description box below where you can pick one up from Amazon. But basically I've just taped them two together. So one end goes into the guitar. This end here goes into the guitar. Your headphones go in your ears, down your back, and they plug into the other end of this cable here. The other end of this cable, one end goes into the pedal board on the floor, the other end goes in the front of the headphone amp, like so. So one end into the headphone amp, one end into the pedal board. And that's our solution. Not very elegant, but it works. And that cable is just taped together with standard black fabric tape. That's it really. So 50 bucks will get you a headphone amp. That uh, extension lead for your headphones to get from your ear down to the floor. That's going to run you about 10 bucks. Depending on which in-ear monitor earphone you use, either you're looking at 13 bucks for the cheaper ME Electronics one, 50 bucks for the slightly better one, or 100 bucks for the sure one. Now, if getting a click in your ear is your main focus, then let me recommend you just get the simple ME Electronics ones that are only going to set you back 13 bucks. If you want more of a mix in your ear, you might have to go for something a bit more expensive. So by implementing this solution with our worship band, I was able to remove all the onstage floor monitors. I was also through some other creative thinking, able to remove the guitar amp from the stage and plug the bass directly into the mixing console through a DI so I didn't have a bass amp at all. My stage volume went from being so significant that I could run the entire service with the main volume on the front of the house off and not even notice to having full control from behind the mixing desk. Look, I hope that's been helpful. If you do have any questions, I'm happy to help. So please leave them in the comments below. Links to all these products are also in the description box below. So please click them, check them out, and let me know how you get on. Until next time, stay tuned. More tips coming your way.